two young uh, uh, presenters from they are in high school, but they they are already working in companies uh, as interns in Microsoft, both on the uh, 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 topic and area of cancer detection. And uh, Shreya Mupala, uh, she's a senior uh, um, uh, in Cupertino High School, and she's currently the president of her uh, school uh, school's Women in Tech uh, Club, and. Uh, in USA CO silver level, uh, that's what she is, and uh, she is ready to follow her father's uh, uh, amazing uh, uh, footsteps. That's that's nice to hear. And then uh, Shayan uh, Patek uh, is currently a high school intern in Microsoft again. He's a sophomore uh, at Inglemore High School, and uh, he is doing a lot of uh, volunteering as well. Uh, um, and then his area of interest as well is applied to healthcare and environment in, of AI. And then he is a co-founder of LearnWithAmrita.org. It's a non-profit organization to improve STEM education um, for blind and underprivileged children. There is also a STEAM he probably is familiar with to add arts and blind children and even uh, um, underprivileged children are good in music and many other talents, uh, uh, art, some of them, you know, who, who can speak and uh, uh, see. Um, please go ahead and start your presentation. We are ready. Hi, everyone. My name is Surya Mapala, and in today's presentation, we also have Shreyan Pathak, and we both are high school interns at Microsoft AI. So in today's presentation, we'll be covering our team's progress at a one-week hackathon in which we built an app called SmartSkin. So SmartSkin is an app that detects whether or not a person has a malignant or benign skin lesion and whether they have to consult a doctor after that. So now we have a short video explaining what we accomplished during the one week hackathon. This hackathon, we're using the power of AI to take on skin cancer. Before joining this hackathon project, I didn't know that skin cancer is the most common type of cancer. And although skin cancer takes on many forms, melanoma, the most aggressive form of skin cancer, has a nearly 100% cure rate when caught and treated early. So we're building an AI assistant that can help people around the world screen for skin cancer and stop it in its tracks. I'm Aniswa Fermini. I'm a senior data scientist in the AI good team. My father is a cancer survivor. So I thought, how can I use AI to do something to help the cancer patients? We have been trying to go and pitch this idea to doctors. But we thought Hackathon would be an amazing place to build a prototype and a sample app which we can test out on ourselves. Hi, my name is Shreya, and I'm a summer high school intern at Microsoft. I'm Trayan, and I'm a high school summer interning for AI for Good. Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Leo. And we're high school interns. Hi, I'm Leo. I'm Veronica. I'm Victoria. I'm Shabazz. And we're Microsoft summer interns. I'm very interested in AI because I believe that AI is the key to solving many worldwide issues, such as skin cancer. I'm interested in programming and biology, so I thought this project would be perfect. And I'm really excited about this project because it's a really interesting intersection of machine learning and healthcare. Our AI-assisted app takes in an image and tries to screen a cancer patient or non-cancer patient and give you an informed decision if you need to go see a doctor or not. So we trained a CNN to classify images of skin lesions as either low risk or high risk so people can decide whether they want to go get screened or not. And our initial version got an accuracy of about 80%. So then we added a segmentation model as a first layer. Um, and we just were able to increase the, the um, accuracy to 90%. So in order to maximize the size of the use space our app can reach, we decided to develop for Android and iOS. So on iOS, we used Core ML models. And on Android, we used TensorFlow Lite. We want to make a contribution through this AI for Good initiative and influence the community and help the community by uh, providing this AI-assisted app and making it open source down the line.
So as mentioned in the previous uh, video, skin cancer is the most common type of cancer. And when it's diagnosed early, it can have almost 100% cure rate. Um, for example, my boss's boss, he has, he's a pale skin um, and it's in his genetics and like previous family members have had it before. So he's very prone to the skin cancer. And every month he has to go to the doctor and get screened and pay $300 every month. For like, um, for my boss's boss, that's like fine, but it's very costly for somebody who is who cannot afford that. And especially with uh, global warming and the ozone layer depleting and all these dry conditions we are having, um, if we don't solve this problem, uh, then it can cause a huge burden on the medical system. So we developed an app, iOS and Android app, that will take a photo of your um, skin lesion and then it will tell you whether it's um, benign or malignant or if you need to go visit the doctor or if you're fine. So before we go into like the pipeline of our project, I wanted to like bring in a few key terms and like what our whole project is about basically. So what is skin cancer? It's the uncontrolled growth of abnormal skin cells. It's often caused by ultraviolet radiation from sunshine or tanning beds. Unfortunately, it's also a potential genetic basis for susceptibility. And the reason why we wanted to pursue this project mainly was because it was a major public health problem with over 5 million newly diagnosed cases in the US per year. So how do physicians diagnose the skin cancer? Usually the dermatologist does a skin examination and that's how they get the definite diagnosis of the skin cancer. And many times the just appearance of the skin lesion alone is sufficient to make the diagnosis. And melanoma is the deadliest form of skin cancer responsible for over 9,000 deaths each year. So on this slide, we put like examples of our data that we used to train our models to classify whether a lesion was um, malignant or benign. So we're gonna use the word skin lesion a lot throughout this presentation. And skin lesion just refers to this like circular shape here, which is it's usually tends to be very dark on the skin. And yeah, like that's whenever we refer to skin lesion, this is what we mean. So on the left-hand side, you can see malignant samples, which means that they do have to go consult a doctor to get treated. And on the right hand side, you can right hand side you can see there's benign samples. Um, so yeah, this is just a summary of like the data set we used, which was from ISIC. And like this is yeah, main, main the main data set we basically used throughout the entire project. So we propose a smartphone and IoT based assistant. Um, it uses deep learning to take the snapshots of the skin lesion and then it will distinguish between malignant and the benign melanoma skin images. Okay. So before our team entered the hackathon, this was like our initial pipeline of our project. So here you can see on the bottom, um, on the bottom, um, the person or user would take a picture and it obviously be an RGB image with a color and that would be passed in through the CNN model is here to classify whether the person has a benign or malignant skin lesion. So because this is such a big model with so much data, um, we had to train it in the Azure VM and we compressed this model using Core ML to integrate it into our app. And we used Xamarin to um, basically build our app also. So on the right hand side, you can see an example of what our app was initially like it looked like. Um, on the top, you can see an RGB image of the person that the person took. And on the bottom, you can see the percentage of whether or not they're in the clear or they have to go consult the doctor. So yeah, this is just like the initial before we even like enter the hackathon. So some of the related work that was done to um, what was discussed in the previous slide is the dermatologist level classification of skin cancer with deep neural networks at Nature by 42, 
And another one is skin cancer detection and tracking using data synthesis and deep learning in the NIPS machine learning for healthcare workshop 2016. So before we enter the hackathon, we noticed there were two major problems with the initial model, which is why Powell, who was in the video, he said that we had an initial accuracy of 80%. So the first problem was we weren't sure if the model was learning about the lesion slash moles only and not overfitting on the background. So that means like there, um, we can't expect users to like, like send a picture that's perfect for us, right? Like they, there could be hair, there could be other like noises, like different objects. So and it might be blurry. So we're like, we just wanted to eliminate those distractions. So that was the first task in our hackathon. And then the second major problem was that the model was not cross demographic, which means that, um, so yeah, cross demographic just means that it didn't, wouldn't work as well for people, other people, other people who weren't Caucasian basically. So the reason why that's the case is because on the, so here where I showed you these um, example data. Um, notice how like all the images contain people who have only white skin or like they're Caucasian. So obviously if the model, um, if this image is what's being passed in through the model, it's going to only think that, oh, whatever user is using this app, they're all Caucasian. And it will like identify it really well if the person is Caucasian, if they have skin, uh, a malignant or benign skin lesion. So that was the second, issue with our model and we wanted to make it cross demographics so we could reach people with different skin tones and make it just very accessible for everyone. So these are like the two major problems we faced when entering the hackathon. So to solve these two problems about background noise such as hair and also um, people with pale skin having a higher contrast to the lesion, than people with darker skin tones. Um, we looked into binary compression techniques. So basically turning the um, image into a sort of black and white in the which the white is only the shape of the skin lesion and the black is the background of the, um, the background noise and all the skin. This way, um, we could eliminate hairs out of uh, obstructing the shape of the skin lesion um, and also, um, no matter what different type, what different um, color of tone you are, um, the the result will look the same. So, as you can see here in the top right, um, the skin lesion is all in white, and all of the background skin has been turned into the black. So this way, um, the the model is detecting f f from its shape and not what the RGB image looks like. So some of the um, techniques we used is global thresholding. Here you can see um, adaptive Gaussian thresholding and adaptive mean thresholding. Um, uh, global thresholding um, did do the best in these ones. Uh, so especially enhanced the lesion features a lot and the purpose of this is that if we can make this work, um, then we can make it accessible to almost everybody who, so that um, anybody who has uh, any skin tone, it will not matter. Um, and Shreya will also discuss some other binary compression techniques that we used in the next slide. So the second technique that we used for background removal was this uh, idea of segmentation process. So segmentation is when you extract like the main centered object in the image and produce a binary compressed or basically black and white image. So we had to use GAMS for that. So how it works is, like I said, an RGB image, for example, the garden gnome here, it's passed through the scan and it produces the binary compressed image. And it really enhances the features of the um, garden gnome, like its shape, on its size and everything. So that was really important to us because like before in the CNN model, like RGB image was being, being passed into the CNN model. And like there was again, background noise and we, we just wanted to eliminate that and make it cross demographic also. So the, um, how GANs work, I'm gonna give like a brief summary of GANs. 
um, there's two parts to it, the encoder and decoder. So the encoder extracts the features of the main object. So in our case, it would be the skin less young, like its shape, size, like what I said about the garden note. The second part is the decoder, which upsamples those features that I mentioned, and it turn, it like produces the result image, which is the binary compressed, um, which is the binary compressed image or black and white image. So our team first tried using tiramisu um, to do background removal, but it just didn't work with our project's intentions and like the code didn't match with what our data was. So we didn't, we just um, didn't use that process. We didn't use that GAN, tiramisu. Um, and then we tried using UNET, which is another GAN. Um, however, UNET didn't get the best metrics that we were looking for to integrate into our project. So we kind of kept that as a backup plan mostly, but that wasn't, it didn't have the best metrics basically. And then finally we went to fix to fix scan, which then had pretty good metrics. And the metrics that I'm explaining now, we, I will be showing like a table full of them to explain um, why we chose fix to fix scan out of the other GANs. Um, but yeah, this is just one take, another technique um, to like remove the background and make it cross, make our model like more cross demographic. Okay, so this table here uh, is just visual uh, representation of like how well our Pixific scan worked. So our Pixific scan was first trained on RGB images and ground truth images, which are the first two rows. And then to show you got to show you all like the proof of like how well Pixific scan did, we tested our model on these three RGB images, and it produced the last row here. So you can see they're like really accurate to like the ground truth and it's getting like a, like very specific even in the detail. So it's pretty accurate, the pixivic scan. And even with like distractions, like I mentioned, there could be hair, this weird patch here, and like this kind of faded background here. All these distractions, we can't just like not anticipate them. So we have to like make sure um, we get really accurate GANs to produce these binary compressed images. So yeah, this is just like a table of, a visual table of what, how our Pixific scan worked. Okay, so yeah, these are the metrics that I wanted, that we uh, wanted to show you all um, just in number form instead of visually. So in this table, uh, each row represents a different GAN. Um, the last one, pixel to pixel scan again, was one we chose to integrate into our project. And then each column here represents a different metric score, sort of. Uh, yeah, metric score. So SE here represents sensitivity. Sensitivity just means how well the model was able to accurately identify whether a person, like accurate, accurately identify if a person had um, a malignant skin less young. SP stands for specificity, which measures how well the model was able to accurately identify if the person, if the skin lesion was benign. And then the JC, F1 score, and ACC, this one represents accuracy, all measure accuracy, but with different metrics. So just assume that these three columns just represent accuracy. And the DC score, I will get into in a few minutes. So on the bottom row, like I said, this is Pixivic scan performed reasonably well, like pretty high, except JC score, but it performed really well on, on most of these metrics. However, we can notice that we bolded RCU net to show that it did perform a little bit better than Pixivic scan. Um, however, <clears throat> in the DC score, uh, Pixivic scan did an overall much, much better job than RCU net. And this is mainly the reason why we picked Pixivic scan over RCU net, because DC score, or the DC metric represents reproducibility. So reproducibility means how well or how, how consistent is the model with its accuracy, <clears throat> um, regardless of the data set. So for example, in the pixel pixel scan, we trained our model on ISIC data, the one I showed you like a few slides ago. But if we were to train this pixel pixel scan on a different data set and test it on different images, because of this high DC metric, it means that it will be able to have a, maintain that high accuracy of like 94%, whereas our TUNet didn't have that high of a DC metric. And like the DC metric means a lot to our project because 
We want it to be accessible to anybody, anywhere, regardless of skin tone, background. And it's important that it's able to maintain this high accuracy so it can be trusted and useful like around the world. Um, but you can also see that, like I mentioned, Pixabix scan did, do, did pretty well on the other metrics and it was very close to R2 EMAT. So it wasn't like very far off except like the JC score. So this is, that was just a summary of like why we chose Pixabix scan based on these metrics and like the visual representation that I showed you on the previous slide. So um, for our next steps, we are planning it on compressing the model to run it on Edge AI. Um, Edge AI is basically a platform where you can run this, all this big, um, uh, all this big ML models on um, without internet. So basically everything that happens, happens right inside the phone and you don't need any internet. So, um, that would make it accessible to everyone. And like um, Shreya said, that's what um, it aligns with our mission very well. So um, we used Onyx, which um, is a cross platform. So it works both on iOS and, um, and on Android. So we used Onyx to compress these big models to um, fit inside these things. As you can see in the architecture, we started out with a trained TensorFlow model, and then we had to convert it to TensorFlow Lite, and Android supports that. Um, and for iOS, um, we had to use Core ML, and we built um, the app through that and Xamarin. Okay. So we have here on the next slide, our final pipeline at the end of our hackathon. It's really similar to the one I showed you a few slides ago of our initial pipeline. Um, the only difference is that we integrated a GAN. So again, um, the person who take an RGB image or a picture of their camera would be processed through the GAN. And remember, we used Pixipix GAN for our project, which then produces a black and white or binary compressed image. See how, like again, like it really enhances the uh, skin less young compared to this RGB image that was initially being passed through not because these features are more enhanced, it's able to classify it better as malignant or benign. And like Powell said, we got a much, much higher accuracy, around 90%. So that was a huge improvement from the 80% initially. And then, um, because not only are we doing one model, not only are we training one model, we're training two models this time. So we had to train them in the Azure VM like before. And we use CoreML to compress both of these models so we can integrate them into our app. And yeah, like I said before, we use Xamarin to help building our app. On the right, you can see an example of how our app looked at the end of the hackathon with the binary compressed image at the center and at the bottom, the prediction of whether the skin lesion is malignant or benign and whether they have to go seek a medical advice. So yeah, this is just like the final pipeline for project at the end of the hackathon. So um, the next steps are that um, it's not available on the App Store for download since we would have to go through a clinical trial. Um, so instead, we have um, submitted some application-based papers yes. in journals. And thank you for listening. If you guys have any questions, that would be great. Thank you. Very good, uh, very good presentation. You are professional, you are not just students anymore. That's, that's fantastic to notice that you are able to share between one speaker to another speaker with, with seamlessly. So that's, that's excellent. That's teamwork as well. And um, you are already uh, a scientist uh, who are uh, working on all of this, like uh, skin cancer, which is a major cancer as you already identified. And not only in USA, in other parts, and even parts where the, the sun, you know, uh, has a lot of uh, ultraviolet radiation as well. A lot more uh, into it. And that's good news. Um, thank you a lot for this. I'm going to go and look for any questions in the uh, Q&A uh, part of it. I don't see anything yet, but expect that people try to listen to you and then start typing the questions. So in the meanwhile, 
you know you are welcome to uh, do some any, any other additional statements comments and you know, feel free uh, on that anything um, else you want to say on that we what say yeah. that we had like um we couldn't have our whole team here from the app but they were a huge part of our project yeah and they helped a lot um so yeah unfortunately they couldn't all be here but no 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 we understand that you know you're all in demand i know that you know when you do good work everyone wants you to be there speaking inspiring others in by inspiring even the adults <laughs> a lot of a lot of time so what we all can achieve if we put our heart and soul into it i know each of you are, are working you know close to 20 22 hours teaching other kids in other countries i know because my own nephew you know he is much younger than you and he's coaching kids you know who are similar and older age that's excellent you're doing a lot of uh, social service as well uh, uh, research here and hopefully microsoft uh, microsoft can say you cannot leave microsoft campus anymore you are fully hired to do research that's good news uh, for us all to listen to see in you and any comments you still have few more minutes uh, no no questions have come up uh, people are digesting assume so feel free and uh, say what you need to uh, uh, what else you have i see some fantastic job okay you want to go to the chat part let me see um go to the chat in, in the in the uh, down there and then there is uh, i think uh different look up a formula for this thing and great present next presentation i think people are commenting take a look at it and anything to respond to is chat sometimes is comments only not questions underneath um i think someone i think caroline um yeah 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 i saw your comment about sensitivity and specificity so yeah in our papers we were talking about the formula specifically but i didn't want to like bring in those formulas i wanted to just give like the qualitative sort of aspect of like um how different they were but yeah they definitely used different metrics um and like a different formula definitely oh uh, okay i think uh sunil sabat i think he asked where we got the training data and um we uh got it from isic uh, skin cancer um they have about i think i believe like 2000 different images and we used that um i think shreya can add they're better why we chose gan since she worked more on that than me oh yeah we chose um we did try to use a uh, kaggle also but i think i think just fit better with pixdivic scan and like the metrics we chose um, the metrics that we showed you all that we just felt like pixdivic scan fit really well with i6 data so that's why we like chose i6 data set okay i believe uh is because Isaac had the 2000 um like the, the dermatologist outlined um uh, ground truth images meanwhile Kaggle only had the regular RGB images. Yeah. Um, I think there's some more questions. Society and business. Okay. In the meanwhile while you're reading I can uh, suggest you to go to NCI National Cancer Institute. that's what they specialized in some of the world famous scientists are there you probably want to go and you know contact them let them know what you are doing and they may even give you funding you know nci does funding uh, to at different levels uh, sometimes you have to associate the university uh, for you to get funding that's still okay and they give uh, 150000 i think just to do the white paper not necessarily research yet and close to 3 quarters of a million Eight hundred thousand, I guess. In, uh, these days, um, it's hard. Someone has a question, um, Mark. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, accuracy. Uh, how it relates to false negatives and false positives. We just want to. So for false negatives, we don't want it to say someone has skin cancer when they really don't. And then like false positive is like when we want to say that it's just like opposite. I'm, pro I'm probably going to get confused, but. that's just um we that really um affects the accuracy because we don't want it to like send people in panic or anything um so yeah, that's how uh, specificity and sensitivity were related mostly so yeah um we did try to make sure that um that we would say that there is um 
like skin cancer or like you should visit the doctor more than you should not visit the doctor since the expert advice is always the best but we're just trying to save you like that some of those bucks that like you that are like valuable to like many people who are very poor so Um, I think V2 said, how did you overcome data to one specific population? So yeah, like the whole point of using a GAN was to remove that background. So like when we put the black and white or binary compressed image, there was no more like skin color even involved. So that just helped uh, create or make our data set diverse, even without us looking for a diverse data, for diverse data set. So yeah, that was the whole point of using GANs. Um, and then an anonymous attendee said, so after building the model, how accurate was it from identifying malignant and benign? Um, I think Powell like, um, said like around 90%, little higher, about, I think like 93% was much, much higher than 80% um, initially from the, um, without the GAN pipeline, so yeah. And we also found like some other biases that are like always present when you're doing um, any AI, so um, that's all in the um, in the application-based paper that we are, are writing. So yeah. How many layers did you use in the neural network? Um, I specifically wasn't a part of the neural network. Um, okay. We create we did that part before um, okay. entering the hackathon, so I was mostly involved in the GAN. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Just curious, that's all. How many layers? How many hidden layers? Mm -hmm. Okay, any more questions? I'm just trying to make sure you guys keep on looking for any questions so you answer all the questions. We still have some time. And any other comments, uh, speakers, if you have any more comments? Feel free, you have uh, two, three minutes to, uh, you know, give your comments, anything, future work, anything that you're looking at. So, um, yeah, Swerge, I think, asked that, what are our future goals? So, yeah. like I said, that, um, uh, that we are submitting the application-based paper, and once we can um, get rid of all our biases that we found, um, we would like to um, obviously go into clinical trial and while um, how said in the video, um, our, uh, our ultimate goal is to make this all open source. Okay, that's good, that's good. Also, okay, go ahead. Yeah, Stefan asks, um, did they get any expert help? And yes, we, we did get help um, from our boss or uh, mentor Anishia, so she helped out a lot, so I would like to thank her for that. Okay, if uh, you're welcome to uh, uh, make final statements if you have any. I think questions will be coming anyway. Both of you, if you want to make any final statements, you have still a couple of minutes. None? I guess. Okay, good, good. I'm yeah, not going to push you to make statements. Just want to make sure you get your time. Yeah. Um, no, we're, we were just really uh, excited to work on this because this was definitely like my first time with like AI with like um, real data and like a major issue. Like, no, no. like playing around with Kaggle data. Um, <laughs> not that that's bad, but like um, this is just a very serious project and I was really excited. Um, and I kind of see like and now I kind of think about like different ways that AI could like be helpful in other projects. And I think we're just really, both of us are excited to work with NECA again on different projects other than like healthcare. But yeah, this is a really great introduction to healthcare and AI for us. Yeah, there's a lot of scope for health in healthcare for AI. And we had good speakers who talked about it. You know, good, fantastic. Yeah, I also appreciate all the people who uh, have given us lots of questions and good feedback, and I will be sure to pass that down and try to work on it. Thank sure. you. Okay. 
congratulations uh, both uh, shreya and uh, shreyan uh, for your good presentations very well coordinated other people also co commented on how well you did the whole presentation which is a another important skill as you already know you are mastering it already good good luck